Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Fassel and I'm a junior doctor from London. Now in this video, I want to talk a little bit about an additional degree that I took in the middle of medical school. Now, I didn't realize what a big impact that this degree would have on my career direction. And I also didn't predict that it actually become my favorite year while at university. Now, aside from all the more obvious points about why you should maybe take another degree on top of medicine, I wanted to share a few other things that people haven't really shared before. And that is number one, really getting stuck into research. Number two, the ability for that degree to actually maybe change your future career direction. And finally, the opportunity for you to actually get involved in business and open up some time for you to work on side hustles and things like that. So the degree that I did was a BSc, meaning a Bachelor's of Science, and I did it in anatomy and surgery. And I did it in the middle of medical school. That's why they call it intercalated BSc, meaning that you sort of sandwich that one year of studying in the middle of medical school. Now, a little bit about my story. I, I wanted to be a surgeon at the time. I was in my third year of medical school and all I knew was that I didn't really like research at the time, but I knew that I had to do some research in order to bulk up my portfolio to become a more competitive applicant for surgery. And one of the things everyone told me to do was to consider this intercalated BSc. It wasn't optional, but I know that it helps with a lot of points when it comes to application time and you know, applying for specialty posts and things like that. Now, it was fairly self-explanatory that an additional degree, number one, just looks good. The fact that it would be in anatomy and surgery would be another big bonus for you know applying for surgery down the line and it would also allow me to have dedicated time to actually work on understanding research getting some uh, presentations and publications out so that would really bulk up my portfolio if i was able to get them now let me quickly run through what happened in that year so during this degree the first thing that was like really noticeable for me was that i was thrown like knee deep into clinical research and I got involved in everything, whether it was literature searches, you know, creating abstracts, uh, referencing, writing manuscripts, statistics and everything, things that I had never done before. But now I was doing it in something that I really enjoyed, so I was much more willing to learn about it. And secondly, I met some amazing mentors. These are clinicians that I still keep in touch with today, some of which even turned up at my graduation for that degree, simply because, you know, I had worked with them for so long and they took the time out to actually sit there and watch me graduate, which I thought was like the nicest thing ever. By the end of that year, some of the pieces of work that I had done um, for part of my degree, I actually submitted to several conferences and I ended up with something like maybe five presentations, like nationally and internationally. So some of which were poster presentations and some were oral presentations. And two years on from that bachelor's degree, I ended up getting my first publication, which was that massive systematic review, which I just mentioned. And that took a lot of time, but I wouldn't have been able to do that without that, you know, that dedicated time to work on something so big. Another thing was that I got really stuck in with learning practical skills. So one of my modules was very clinically orientated towards medical students specifically. And that meant that essentially, not only did it focus on the practical side of surgery, but it also offered us the opportunity to learn a lot of practical skills and there and then like hand get really hands on. So I learned how to suture, tie knots, um, operate on like a little grape using a micro surgical skill set. I got to use a Da Vinci surgical system, which is like one of the only robots which is licensed to actually operate on people. Um, yeah, the opportunities were amazing. So I learned a lot on that side. And also because I was so like motivated doing that year, I was so excited doing things that I really wanted to be doing. Even in my spare time, I felt like I was a lot more driven. I, during that, the entirety of that year, I actually spent a lot of my spare time creating a company, a teaching company called MedTalk. Um, I don't really, you know, I'm not really involved in it too much anymore, but essentially I went through designing a website, you know, structuring a whole course, uh, hiring a venue, actually selling tickets and then going and presenting myself along with some of my peers and so yeah that year was just super amazing for a lot of different reasons. Now looking back on it like three years down the line I can see how it, it really helped me in life in so many different ways. So firstly it helped boost my medical career, secondly it helped me sort of 
change direction of my medical career, it made me realize what I wanted to do more than what I wanted to do at the time. And finally, it opened up avenues for me to actually explore side hustles and sort of hobbies and things that I wanted to do outside of medicine. Okay, so how did that extra year boost my medical career? Firstly, the research that I did gave me about five or six oral presentations and poster presentations combined just from that one year alone. It also led up to me getting my first publication. I was the first author, it was a really big publication, so a really high quality thing. And also I think that all that sort of culminated in me having a really strong application for applying for the academic foundation program, which is what I'm on now. So I would wholeheartedly say that without that, without that one degree, that one year out that I took, I would not be in the position that I am in now. And finally, like I said, it influenced what I wanted to do outside of medicine. So it really made me think about, you know, entrepreneurship, maybe possibly, you know, getting involved in a startup. Um, I'm currently working on some, something right now, which I'm really passionate about. So you never know where that might lead down the line. If it means taking a bit of time out of clinical medicine, who knows? But I'd also like some time to, you know, create things like I'm doing now on this YouTube channel. I write a weekly newsletter and I really like teaching as well so that's definitely something that I want to incorporate in my future career and so for me to sort of incorporate all these new ambitions outside of medicine or sort of linked to medicine I realized that maybe surgery wouldn't have been the best for me and I know a lot of people, surgeons have made this work but just for me it probably wasn't the best idea so I'm really grateful that, that I took that one year out because if I hadn't have made hadn't had made that company in that one year, I wouldn't have sort of sparked that interest I had like deep inside of me, if you know what I mean. Okay, so now let me tell you a few of the pros and cons of taking that BSc outside of what you probably already know. Okay, so one of the most important things that I would say an integrated BSc offers you is real clarity on career direction. So I I personally think that a lot of medical school uh, students are really like sort of narrow-minded or we, we sort of set our eyes on you know what clinical specialty that we're gonna pursue in the future and that's the extent extent of like our ambition so for example if somebody wants to be a surgeon from beginning to end of medical school we think oh I just need to become a surgeon I just need to become a surgeon I need to become the best surgeon I can be which is fair enough but how do you know what else is out there for you if you haven't sort of taking the time to look for it or taking the time out to reflect on whether or not you know you're do you're going in the route that you actually want to and so many medical students don't actually know what specialty they want to go into they sort of have a vague idea and then you know they end up going through the whole medical school without sort of exploring it a bit more and before you know it they're like F1s or F2s and they have to make a decision on what specialty to apply for and then they were like they sort of panic and think you know what okay I'll just stick to that decision that I made. Taking taking that integrated BSc was probably the first time that I actually got out of that bubble of okay just move on to next year move on to next year and it allowed me to sort of reflect on what I wanted to do in life you know the things I wanted to do outside of medicine and it sort of felt like what a lot of medical students will describe as like what a gap year did to them. I never took a gap year, so I just went from school, uh, you know, you know, school straight to university. So I was always in this like narrow bubble. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that that's probably one of the most important things about taking this degree. It could literally change, you know, the f your career direction. Okay, my second point is some of the key skills that you'll be learning during that degree, regardless of sort of what type of degree you're doing. So I would say everyone has to become a little bit better at researching during that year because you're doing, you know, you're writing a thesis, you probably have to do some research, you, you, you'd probably be encouraged to present some of that work as posters or oral presentations and maybe even publish that work down the line, uh, working in a team to do so. And because of all that work that you've created, that will actually give you points later down the line, whether you're applying for the normal foundation program, the academic foundation program, or even specialty posts down the line. And you could also win grants and awards and prizes as a result of that research. So, you know, on the research side of things, it really helps with your future career, no matter where, what you sort of want to do. Secondly, I would say 
the confidence that you gain from learning all these skills from actually presenting is really helpful you can also network with clinicians especially if you're studying something which is in line with what you want to do in the future and finally i think that every student should take the time doing that bsc to sort of understand how to read a research paper and how to break it apart how to filter out the rubbish and how to sort of focus in on what's important because all of medicine is essentially run by evidence-based medicine and the guidelines which are based off of that evidence so knowing how to read a research paper and you know kind of like deconstruct it to take out the important bits i think I think is like a skill that every medical student or doctor should know how to do, like, you know, end off. That's my personal opinion. And thirdly, as I mentioned before, taking the time out of medicine to focus on other things is something that you might not have the time to do later, later on in life. Like you might be, you know, three or four years into specialty training and you might think to yourself, oh, I really wish I took the time out to study something else to explore a passion of mine, to maybe start a side business or something that I'm interested in. And this is an amazing time for you to sort of, you know, just take one year, it's only one year, like in the grand scheme of things, you're at university for five years if you're an undergraduate student. So what's an extra year for a whole, you know, a whole additional degree for you to sort of, sort of put a pause on the stress of medical school and learn some new skills, open up, you know, new opportunities. I think that's like priceless. Okay, so one of the main negatives about the Intercollect DSC is that you essentially are living as a student for another year and all the costs associated with that, but you're also delaying actually earning a salary for another year. So for a lot of people that's a deal breaker, but I would say if you can afford it, if you can find a way to sort of, you know, manage your financial situation during that time, I would definitely recommend it. And thirdly, it's a bit of a spin-off to my earlier point about the sort of change in career direction. Now, this Intercalated BSc, if you do it in something that, you know, if you do it in line with what you want to do in the future, during that year, you might find that, wow, I'd, maybe I don't actually like this as much as I thought. And also, if you do it in something that you want to just explore a little bit more, and it introduces doubt into your mind about what you want to do in the future, I think it can be a difficult situation for students to be in because all of a sudden you're like, two thirds of the way along medical school and now you've got all this doubt in your mind, you don't know what route to go down. But I would personally argue that that's actually a good thing. I think that it's better to have that doubt now than like five or 10 years into your career down the line. So the earlier you can sort of explore other avenues and sort of really challenge your, your faith in what you're doing, I think that's probably the best way to go. Okay, so here's my conclusion. Number one, if you can afford to do it and find a way to manage your finances for it, do it. And do it in something that you will actually enjoy. Point number two is that it can completely change your career direction like it did to me, like it did to a lot of other people that I know. Some have completely sort of left clinical medicine and gone into business and entrepreneurship. Others have got really knee deep in academia. Um, some have even taken that time in that Intercollect BSc to sort of explore what they were studying in that year a little bit more and now have completely changed specialty in that way. So the BSc can really be a catalyst for like a change of mind. It can really open up new doors. It can sort of make you realize things about yourself that otherwise you wouldn't be able to find out later down the line. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If something really resonated with you, if you took away something that you didn't know before, Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be uploading some videos in the near future on how you can get involved in research, the academic foundation program, how you can go and present your work internationally, that sort of thing. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. See ya.